Hi, I'm David Harry, and in this video, I'm going to be testing a ton of microphones with the Sony AX53. Okay, so what it is, I'm going to be testing a ton of microphones and a couple of them in different configurations. So what I'm going to have to do with this one is put a list in the description of the microphones that I'm using. And the main reason for that is, is because I forgot what I brought out. So there'll be a list of the microphones used. Uh, and if one of them or two of them have been used in different configurations, I will make a note of that. And I'll also have like a point in the timeline where you can go and like see them in the video. Also, there'll be links to like where you can go buy them and stuff like that now just a few things about this particular test just so that we know exactly what the conditions are um, basically every microphone that I'm trying here is what is called an electric condenser which basically requires a small bit of power usually supplied by the microphone output or the microphone input of a camcorder camera DSLR smartphone Tons of devices actually supply a little bit of voltage down the microphone cable to power the microphone. So basically, all condensers, no dynamics. Now, the other thing as well about this test, what I'm going to be doing is testing cardioid microphones and also omni microphones. Also, I'll be doing some wireless variations as well. Now, let me just explain quickly what cardioid means. Okay, so what it is, cardioid is the description of how the microphone picks up or in what direction direction it picks up in so there's a microphone there now the capsule is there so the capsule is the element that actually does all the recording now what happens is if you can imagine a bubble in front of the microphone here just a big bubble well in that area that's where the microphone or a cardioid microphone has its kind of sweet spot for picking up and then the further away you get away from that bubble like it's like less sensitive if you come to the side of the microphone, it's less sensitive. And then if you come to the rear of the microphone, it becomes even less sensitive. So that's basically how a cardioid microphone kind of picks up or its pick up pattern. And weirdly, we've got a plane up in the air right now. So although the plane is up in the air, it's that way in front of the microphone. So it will be picking it up, but it should be picking me up even more. Okay, so that's the basis of what a cardioid microphone is. The other thing that I'm going to do here is every time I put a different microphone on, I'm going to manually set its input level. So basically, I'm optimizing the gain per microphone. And then when I get into post-production, because their microphones will be different levels, even though they look the same on a VU meter, what will happen is they will sound, some of them will sound louder than others, just different microphones like kind of like pick up different energy and stuff so even though they might look the same going in they actually may sound different coming out as far as volume is concerned so what i'm going to do in post when i do the edit i will just basically level them out so they're roughly there about the same so not one mic jumps out over another but i will also use a little tiny piece of limiting as well or a little bit of limiting just to take the peaks out which will allow me to get the microphone as close to the zero db mark as possible without clipping or distortion and just on that as well if you check this link just up here this will take you to a video which shows you the software that I use for doing my limiting which is Loudmax and it's a VST plugin now after I've done the limiting and such I will not be touching the sound of the microphones anything beyond that so I won't be applying any EQ which is like bass and treble none of that because I just want to give you the best possible opportunity to kind of judge for yourself whatever differences that there are with these microphones now just a quick note on the picture settings as well for this particular test although it is a microphone audio test I'll just explain quickly about the picture what it is I've kind of got the camera in completely automatic mode now we will have to do that because what it is at the moment the lights go or the sun is going in and out of cloud and stuff like that so i can't be sitting there like manually resetting exposures and stuff like that so what you're seeing now is this 53 in fully automatic mode also i've got it on fully automatic focus as well now i'm just hoping that it is picking me out properly because what it is i'm dark skinned obviously and what it is this is a contrast based focus system and and sometimes they get me mixed up with the background like if it's like green or brown or dark so hopefully I'm in focus as well so yeah that's just the basis of how I've set the actual camera up for this test 
Okay, so with all that blurb out the way, I am on the Rode Video Micro. Now, it's probably not even an argument or a contest as to what is the most popular video microphone of all time. And by that, what I mean is, you know, the little small mics, you know, like this one and the one that I'd shown before and a couple of the others that I've got with me as well. So, yeah, basically, this is the one, I think, that kind of kicked off the whole thing as far as these little tiny, like, on-body video microphones are concerned. So, anyway... All the way through this introduction, you'll have got a great idea as to how the Rode Video Mic sounds. So what I'm gonna do is do a quick walk around the camera to give ourselves an idea of what its cardio pickup pattern is like. Okay, so what it is now, I am to one side of the camera at the exact same distance that it was from the front. It should have dropped off a bit like the level of my voice. And now I'm right behind the camera or right behind the microphone as well. And again, exact same distance at the rear. And then what it is, I am now to the side. And again, I should be lower than what I was at the front, but not as low as what I was just then behind it. And now I'm right at the front again. Okay, now the other thing that I always recommend with like, you know, any microphone is that you get it as close as possible to your subject. Now, the reason why you do that is because if you don't, you're gonna to have to start like gaining and gaining with the microphone and inevitably what that will do, it will bring in hiss and stuff. So the closer you get to a microphone, the better your signal to noise ratio is gonna be. And also the better the sound's gonna be because the microphone or the capsule doesn't have to work so hard at picking up what's in front of it. And it will also help you to stand out from any other sounds that are around it because you will be the loudest sound source to the microphone. Now that said, I know a lot of people like to know how these things all pick up from distance and stuff so what i will do with each of like the on body things that are set or the on body mics i will do a little bit of a distance from it just to give you an idea again i don't recommend doing it but there are sometimes situations where you know you can't get as close as you want to whatever it is that you're trying to film and pick up the sound from so yes i will do that so again full arms length away now, I'm not going to walk off crazy distances. I'll just kind of walk back a little bit. I don't know, a bit further than this, and then I'll come back into the camera again. So, yeah, I think, I mean, this is probably going to be far enough away because, yeah, it's just going to keep dropping and dropping the further I go back. In fact, let me see if I can try and remember this mark because I'll, I'll kind of come up to here with the other mics. Okay, so I'm gonna come back in now, and as I'm coming back in, you'll see that I'm getting louder. Now, again, what I'm not gonna do there in post, I'm not gonna raise the level any further to bring it back up in post. It's just gonna be the same level, so we, we'll get a definite idea of how the drop-off happens like that. I won't explain any of this stuff again, by the way, with the other microphones. This is a massive explanation, just because it's the first mic, and I'm trying to like test the mic and explain what the test is all about at the same time now the only one thing as well here every microphone will have some form of wind protection on it as well whether that be a foam filter or whether it be a small dead cat right now the micro has its own little dead cat on now i think i've probably done everything i need to do to explain the test the introduction all the information and the very first microphone in the test and we're only two days into it right so what i'm going to do i'm going to step out the frame and I'll just go quiet. Now what it is, what we're testing for here is inherent noise. So we are gonna hear sounds when, I'm, when I stop talking and go out the frame. But what we're gonna try and listen for here is can we hear hiss on the microphone? Okay, so I'll do that and then I'll get onto the next microphone. So I'm now over onto the Movo VXR10. Interestingly, this is an identical microphone to the Boya BYMM1. So one of them is basically just a rebadging of the other. I don't know which way around it is, but both of them are identical. So again, I'll just do a little bit of blurb and then I'll do like me two little tests, you know, me distance thing and like, you know, me, oh, three tests it is actually distance cardioid and silence yeah so this microphone once again is another cardioid and basically it's roughly the same size as like you know the little micro there's a few of them that all look very similar but they do sound uniquely slightly different and hopefully this test is going to give you a really good idea of exactly just what those differences are now to be honest you know 
it'd probably be fair to say you know most of the differences are probably going to be quite minute and also if you're listening say on a smartphone or say on small speakers on a pad or something chances are you're probably not going to hear any difference whatsoever so the best way to kind of like you know determine the differences for tests like these or any other similar tests like this that you might see on youtube is to use a good pair of headphones or listen properly on speakers and stuff because like i say you know the differences can be very small so you probably won't hear any difference on a phone all right so what i'm gonna do now i'll uh, i'll just walk off and talk a little bit and uh, see if i can try and remember where i marked the grass before okay so again same thing it is going to drop off as i start walking backwards um i'm having difficulty now working out where to put that oh there it is right so this is as far back as it went before right do you know what it's not that obvious and i'm not going to wreck the grass when i'm doing this because it's been raining and the grass is a bit wrecked anyway okay so i'm going to walk back towards the camera and we'll get an idea of exactly you know what the difference is as i walked off from it again and i'll probably reiterate this a few times as i'm going through because that's what i do i'm dead boring like that but i wouldn't advise doing that get as close as you can it's gonna work best also as well this microphone is using its own dead cat as well which comes with it in its package okay so now what I'm gonna do is me little light like, walk around and test for the cardioid pattern so once again I am to one side of the microphone full arms length away as I was from the front we should notice a bit of a drop off in, in like how loud I am now I'm right round to the rear of the microphone again exact same arm's length distance and we should notice a bit more of a drop off as well and then round to the other side and that should really be similar to when it was on the other side again a bit lower than what it was from the front and then finally back round to the front again okay so what i'm going to do now is step out of the frame do a bit of silence and go to the next microphone okay so i'm now over onto the comica vm10 and this is the mark one version interestingly i will be receiving a mark two version of this particular microphone today comica have been in touch with me and sent me out a microphone to do a youtube review on so at some point you know i will be doing one on the mark two of this also as well i've done videos with all of these microphones before so there will be some things pop up here every now and then uh, linking to say say like other videos where you might want to go and have a listen to you know other things i've done with these mics and also there'll be links in the descriptions as well and stuff like that for anything that i can come up with that might be of interest to people as i go through each of the microphones anyway okay now the other interesting thing about this particular microphone is although the uh, the video micro was me first of these little small mics and i love it to bits it's built like a tank it'll take a ton of stick and i think it sounds great i've got to say i think the vm10 has kind of become maybe my favorite to be honest it's a toss-up between the vm10 and the micro for me out of all the small mics and um, now that i'm not saying that like you know they're definitely the better ones just a personal taste thing for me uh, the main difference is hello hello sorry i was just saying hello to the dog uh, right yeah so what where was i then yeah the uh, main differences for me between this mic and the micro is that the micro is a little bit more kind of toppy high end it's a bit brighter sound and and that can be an amazingly good thing if say for instance you're somewhere and there's a bit more noise around and you need to pick up dialogue a brighter microphone will help to pick out dialogue a bit more or a person's voice but this microphone has got a bit more of a richer low end to it maybe again all quite subtle things really and things that maybe a lot of people don't necessarily notice if you're a bit geeky and stuff and you're into your audio then yeah you'll get all this stuff do you know what i mean but like i say this one is just a little bit maybe full of sound than in the in the lower end also as well it's a tad less sensitive as well so the main difference is there now i'm not going to go on between like the differences of all these mics do you know what i mean it's just these two because these are the two that i use mostly out of the small ones okay so what i'm gonna do now is take a little bit of a walk back again i think i've uh, i think i'll know where i've got to go to here um the thing with doing this right now it's just a case of me trying to talk a bit and, and make things up as i'm talking 
you know what, have I lost it? I have. Not only have I lost my mark, I've lost the plot. Right, okay, well, that'll do. Uh, I'll come back to the mic, I'll come back into the microphone. Anyway, yeah. Uh, do you know what, to be honest, I don't think setting a marker there is going to be like, you know, a big deal. I'll just walk back somewhere random and then come back to the mic. It's going to give us the idea anyway. Okay, so as far as like that's concerned, we'll get a good idea of like, you know, how much did it drop off as, as I went back there. So what I'm going to do now is me little walk around for the cardioid test. Oh yeah, again, sorry. Again, yes, this is also a cardioid. I don't think I mentioned it when I started the, uh, the blurb for this one. So... Again, I'm at one side here, exact same arm's length distance as I am from the front. We should notice a bit of a drop off. I'm round to the rear and we should notice that's dropped off even more compared to the side. And then I am round to the other side. Again, full arm's length away the way I am from the front. Again, should be a drop off and then back to the front again and exact same distance. Okay, so that's the cardioid pattern test or the cardioid sensitivity pickup test for this Comica VM10. So what I'll do now, I shall step out of the frame, give ourselves a few seconds of silence and get to the next microphone. I'm now over onto my Sennheiser ME64. Now this is actually my favorite microphone for doing dialogue stuff. And I use this indoors and outdoors and it's fantastic. Again, it's another cardioid, but this one is a bit different than the others because them other microphones, they're like, they kind of cost between 40 to 50 pounds, 40 to 50 dollars. Uh, this particular microphone costs about 300 to 350 pounds or dollars. So it is a very different kind of price bracket, but it's got a ton more advantages compared to the others. Um, it's a lot more sensitive. It's got a better frequency response range. It can handle dynamics better. It can handle sound pressure levels better. It's just all round a much better microphone. But do you really need something like this? to just do this vloggy type stuff with. Now, that really is debatable because if you can use any microphone, get out, pick up your dialogue and it sounds clean and it's understandable, that's job done. So whether you do that with a 40 pound microphone or a 300 pound microphone or $40, $300, it really doesn't matter as long as you've captured your dialogue better, you know, or better than like an internal microphone would do. So yeah, I'm only putting this one in just to give you an idea of how like a more expensive microphone would sound to like the more budget ranges that I've just been using. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll do a bit of a walk off test with this one as well, okay? Ah, actually, one other thing, this particular microphone is self-powered as well. So unlike, you know, the other ones just then, which take their power from the camera itself through the microphone cable, this one, you put a little battery in it. Reason for that is, is although this is also an electric condenser type capsule in it, like you know, exactly the same as the other microphones, this one requires a bit more power. So what this one does inside it, when the battery goes in, it has electronics inside to like boost up the power to a higher voltage because the capsule on this one requires a higher voltage. So that's like the main difference as well, you know, between this and the others. Okay, so I'll do me a little bit of a walk off thing. Again, you know, I wouldn't recommend it. Even with this microphone, I wouldn't recommend it because it's, it's just not how you do it. Um, but like I was saying earlier on, you just may not have an option. You may just have to like, you know, be far away from the source of audio that you're trying to record. You could be out somewhere and you might be trying to film something. You might be behind a barrier and there might be something going on in front of you and you can't get that close. That is when you've got no option and you've got to like, you know, film and like record from a distance. Anyway, so that'll give us an idea as to how the ME64 was at that distance there. Again, I'll come round the side there. So I'm off to one side here, so we'll see what the drop-off's like with that. And then I'll come right round to the rear. Now, that should have dropped off even more. 
and then I will come round to the other side and then that should have been like, well this should be a bit louder than what it was just then at the rear and then I come back round to the front again and again this should be the loudest point where the microphone's going to pick up or it's like it's healthiest pickup is right in front of it one last thing to mention about this particular microphone, uh, I don't have a dedicated dead cap for it for when it's mounted on a camera like this. So what I've done here, I've used the dead cat off the road video micro. Now what I will do is step out of the frame, do a little bit of silence with this and then carry on with the test. Okay, so I'm now over onto the lavalier microphones for this test. And right now, these are gonna be hardwired, so wired straight into the camcorder. So right now, I am on the Purple Panda lavalier microphone. Now what it is, this one is an omnidirectional microphone. So whereas earlier on, I explained the way a cardioid works, where it basically picks up a bubble pattern in front of it. If you could imagine this sits right in the middle of a bubble. So basically, this will pick up from every conceivable direction. And because of that, it does have a different type of tonal characteristic, or lavaliers in general will have a different tonal characteristic compared to say a shotgun microphone or a video microphone or a cardioid on top of a camera so this is just going to give us a really good idea as to how this microphone sounds again the purple panda now what it is i'm using this one because this is about as cheap as you can go for a lavalier um, which has got a, like a name brand now what it is you can buy cheaper ones than this but the problem is is that it's difficult sometimes because I've come across some really cheap ones for like four or five pound, which sound great. But then when you reorder them again from the same supplier, the capsule inside of them may have changed and then they sound completely different. So at least with the Purple Panda, with it being like a low, like a low cost budget one, you definitely know that you're gonna be getting the same mic every time as it were. So yeah, this is gonna give you a really good idea of how the Purple Panda sounds. Now obviously I can't do a walk distance because I'm, I'm tethered now to the camera, but I will be doing uh, some radio examples or wireless examples shortly. As for doing, um, do you know what? I'll do a silence test by just holding the microphone away from me so I don't interfere. So silence test and then onto the next lavalier. So to the next lavalier, and this one is the Clippy EM184 by mikebooster.com. And this one is different than the vast majority of lavaliers that you're ever likely to come across because this is a cardioid version of a lavalier. Now, the reason why you might wanna use a cardioid lavalier is because you might be somewhere where there's just a ton of noise and the cardioid pattern of this particular lavalier will help to pick your voice up a lot better because one, you are closest to it as the sound source, but two, it is a cardioid. Now don't get me wrong, an Omni lavalier will generally pick you up better anyway because it is closer to you, but in certain instances where there's a lot of noises going on, you might need a cardioid. Now the only thing with cardioid lavaliers is they tend not to sound quite as rich as Omnis. So there's a bit of a trade-off between say cardioid and omni as far well cardioid and omni in general with any microphones there's a trade-off but with lavaliers maybe a little bit more of a trade-off but nonetheless it is definitely a microphone that you would definitely need at some point dependent upon like where you're recording and whatnot and what's going on around you so this will give you a really good idea as to what a cardioid lavalier sounds like so what i'll do i'll hold it out and do a little bit of a silence thing and then I will get on to my favourite lavalier of all time.
and so to my favorite lavalier microphone of all time and also on top of that one of the most impressive microphones of all time as far as i'm concerned and this is the clippy em172 and this is also by mikebooster.com don't forget links in the descriptions here where you can go and grab these clippy mics now this is the one that i would recommend that everybody have what it is this microphone is just insane i think it's about 32 pounds they're about a couple of a couple of pound either way of that now that might not sound like it's a budget mic but for the sound of this microphone you are not getting anything remotely like this for anywhere near that price it is absolutely amazing this microphone has got an amazing tone to it and also it is mega quiet as well as being mega sensitive it also has a an, an amazing output level off it as well so this will drive most cameras that you're likely to put into it i would even go as far as to say that this would probably work on like older dslrs which are not very good at gaining microphones and stuff because it's got such a healthy output it's absolutely fantastic now at this point it would also be fair to say that as far as this microphone is concerned i am 100 a fanboy and it uh, i don't in fact you know what i'll also go as far as to say that as much as what i'd said that from the outset i don't want to kind of like give my opinion and try and say to people this is what you should buy and whatnot because really you make these decisions for yourself this is one microphone that i would all day long say to people just buy it it's amazing anyway yeah I, you know i could go on and on about this microphone but i can't because i'm also going to test it shortly again in a different configuration so i can talk more about it then as well anyway so suffice it to say i am absolutely blown away by this microphone also what's worth noting here as well i've had to put my camera on its lowest gain setting to use this microphone that's how sensitive and how healthy this mic is anyway or healthy on its output anyway what i'll do now i'll just hold it i'll do a bit of silence and then move to the next configuration for this test So to the first of two examples of using wireless systems and in this first one what I'm doing is pairing up two things here which are not kind of like sold together and the first one is the purple panda lavalier but I have now paired it up with a Fifine K037 wireless system now what i've done here although you can do this configuration just with converter cables for the sake of convenience i've done a modification to the transmitter and the receiver so that i can just directly plug in 3.5 millimeter stereo microphones but you can do this with, with just using like a couple of converter cables but this is the best sound i've ever heard on any budget wireless system just by combining this microphone with this wireless set now what i'm going to do is just walk around a little bit just to give ourselves an idea of what it's range well i won't do a range test sorry i'll just walk a bit just so you can see the flexibility of using a wireless system now the main reason why you'd want to use a wireless system maybe is because the people that you're recording or the person you're caught you're recording is moving about quite a bit and maybe they're a bit of a distance away from the camera i mean like i was saying before when you're using a tethered microphone or something that's even like you know lobbed on top of the camera it's going to be very difficult to get decent dialogue uh, from like people who are far away from the camera that is when a wireless lavalier really does come into its own and like i just said this is quite possibly like the best sound and budget system ever i think the uh, i think the k037 system is about 30 40 pounds dollars and like you know like i said i don't know if i mentioned the actual price of the purple panda before because this does fluctuate a lot but i think if you give yourself say 20 25 pounds dollars for this lavalier then that's the kind of price range that you're looking at to create a system like this and then maybe you're gonna have to spend 10 
pounds, dollars to do the conversion or get the converter cables, you know, so you can plug the mic in and then also plug the receiver into the camera. The thing is, because I've been talking so much this morning, I'm starting to forget, I'm starting to think about things to say. I'm running out of stuff to talk about, which is pretty ironic for someone like me because I just love the sound of my own voice and usually don't know when to shut up. Anyways, yeah, so what I'm going to do, I'll come back to the camera. So once again, this is like just a really good example of a very budget system. I think you could probably put this together for there about fifty, no, about sixty, seventy pounds dollars thereabouts. And like you know, I don't think you're going to get anything better. The only thing is, this is a analog system, so this I think this uses VHF or UHF radio frequencies, which is brilliant. It'll work in this area, uh, and it'll light, it'll sound great and stuff. But what I'm going to do shortly is switch over to a digital system, and I'll explain what that is when I get to it. Anyways, what I'm going to do, uh, I'll do a bit of a silency thing with this as well because although we've already heard like what the self noise would be like uh, with the purple panda on its own you know once you start adding like radio systems in the equation and stuff like that it does make a difference so I'll do the silence thing and then I'll move on to the next configuration So now to the second example of a wireless system and in this instance I'm using the Rode Rodelink wireless system but with the Mic Booster Clippy EM172. I think earlier on I forgot to mention the Clippy EM172 is an Omni. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to walk around as I'm doing this one a bit. Now what it is, this for me is like an amazing system. One. The actual Rode wireless system itself, I think, is fantastic. And it's a digital one, and I'll explain that shortly. But pairing it up with the Clippy Lavalier, the Clippy EM172 Omni, is an absolutely fantastic combination. Now, I've got to be dead honest here, and I don't know if there's going to be any kind of Rode fanboys out there that might find this one a bit disturbing. But after I bought this, um, this Rode Link system, I sold the lavalier that come with it because the clippy was much better. Um, I mean, it just it just was the case. The clippy is just a much better microphone. Uh, another thing I, I need to mention here as well, with all the lavalier uh, variations that I've done here, whether they be the wireless ones or whether they were being hardwired into the camera, they're, they're only using uh, little tiny foam filters on them. So the thing is, there may well be like bits of wind cropping in and out of things and stuff or popping in and out of things here but uh, yeah just kind of like ignore the wind bit elements if they are getting into it it's just an unavoidable uh, thing you know when you've got wind knocking around and you haven't put dead cats on because the thing is i've not put dead cats on any of the lavaliers main reason for that is is because dead cats do tend to impede sound quite a bit um, especially and well in my opinion especially on lavaliers I've had to use them when I've put the uh, you know the mics on top of the camera and such and the reason for that is is because foam filters definitely would not have been an option with this slight breeze that I've got going on so I've had to put the dead cats on you know with the little video mics and such it, it just it wouldn't have worked otherwise it would just would have been bumps everywhere from the wind anyway I'll just carry on walking around a little bit more now <clears throat> what it is as I was saying before this is what is called a digital system so although it does obviously use um, you know analog frequencies or radio frequencies to transmit the audio data from the uh, from the transmitter to the receiver what happens here the transmitter actually turns the audio information from the analog microphone input into a digital bit stream so basically what it does it does what's called an analog to digital conversion so in that instance you're then dealing with just zeros and ones in the digital domain then what it does it uses the 2.4 gigahertz radio frequency which is similar to a lot of wireless devices to transmit or to bit stream all them zeros and ones over to the receiver
And then at the receiver end, what happens there? That then basically does the opposite, which is a digital to analog conversion. So we can get it back into the analog domain for it to go into the camera. Now, despite all of that funky stuff going on, and like the camera also then does a analog to digital conversion once again when it hits the microphone input, I think this sounds amazing. Uh, there's advantages and disadvantages to both using uh, wirelessly, uh, sorry, digitally transmitted signals on 2.4 gigahertz compared to UHF and VHF. Both of them have got plus and minus points, but for things like this, both of them are going to be fine. It's usually things like obstructions, getting, you know, walls, trees, stuff and whatnot. But if you're in direct line of sight uh, on either a digital or an analog system, and like you know you're within like the specified ranges of the actual radio systems themselves you'd be fine all day long with them it's just down to then like cost and preference to tone and such and whatnot anyway i've rabbited on a lot here so what i'm going to do now is do the little silency thing with this and then i will get to the very last test outdoors So to the very last part of the outdoor test, and I am now using the inbuilt microphones on the 53, which I actually think is a really good microphone system for anything internally on any camera. I actually think this is really good. Now, the only problem is it is a little bit breezy. I may pick up a little bit of wind on this, but yeah, we'll just have to live with that because I don't have anything at all that I can apply to the, you know, to the microphones on top of this camera to stop the breeze. Now I'll just quickly walk around the camera. What it is, this is going to be a, like a stereo omni type pickup. So basically I should be getting picked up fairly much like similar all the way around the camera. That shouldn't really drift too much as it was going around, or at least I don't think so, because my assumption is, is that the two Omnis that are in it, I doubt very much the two cardioids. But anyway, that just gives us an example of the internal microphones. So what I'll do, I'll, again, last thing, I'll step out the frame. Let's listen for like, you know, the, the, the noise and during the silence section. And then what I'll do, I'm gonna go indoors and do a summary after I've listened to all of this stuff. And for that, I'm actually going to be using a professional studio condenser microphone or a professional studio cardioid condenser microphone. So we get another example of one final external microphone for the AX53. Okay, so to the last test microphone, and I'm doing this indoors, with a traditional studio condenser microphone. Now what I'll do, I just have to say, this is two days after I did the outdoor footage and uh, I've been kind of like, you know, t you know, getting all my timeline ready and stuff, you know, for the final edit. And I'm already up to 36, 37 minutes. So, you know, the assembly edit that I've done so far is kind of telling me this is a very long video. So what I'm going to have to do is kind of keep this as short as possible for the summary and also for the example of the last mic. So what it is, this microphone here is a Cascade V57. And unfortunately, these are no longer made, but I just think it's a fantastic microphone. But this is a great example of a studio type condenser mic. And say studio type, it's just that this is, you know, it's, it's traditionally associated with the recording studio, this type of microphone. And what it is, it's a, it's a proper true condenser as opposed to electric condensers, which is what all the other microphones has been. Now, basically, it, it, you know, the shorthand difference here is that with a, an electric condenser, it already has a pre-polarized element in it, which allows it to use a lower voltage and such. There's other differences as well, um, but with a studio condenser or a proper condenser microphone, it doesn't have any pre-polarized anything in it. So what happens is the voltages that go into it have to power and polarize and everything, and also there'd be circuitry inside as well, like pre-amplification circuitry and stuff and whatnot. So things like that all have to be like you know they all require more power basically. So what happens with this? This requires 48 volts phantom power. And the way I'm doing that is using my trusty old little friend, the uh, the Saramonic Smart Rig. As you can see, it won't, probably won't go to focus this. Hold on. Will it? No, I doubt it. It might be too close. What well, is the camera's tracking me at the moment? Uh, but basically, this is a fantastic 
tiny little XLR uh, kind of like preamp power supply. I'll have links to this in the descriptions below. Get yourself one of these if you're using condensers and you want to plug them very quickly into like smartphones or cameras. But anyway, yeah, so do you know what? I'm going to have to stop rabbiting. I I'll have to get straight to the point here because this is dragged on. <laughs> Right, so basically, you've heard a whole bunch of things here, you know, to do with all them mics outside, and then this, finally, this mic. So, as well as this being a thing for the AX53, just to show how good it is, it's actually probably a good, boring, long, but possibly a good video for anybody who's interested in microphones in any way whatsoever to do with cameras and such and whatnot or any or any kind of portable device really. Uh, now the other thing as well that I'd like to just mention quickly is with the AX53 what it is when it records it records to an uncompressed PCM track as well so basically in conjunction with like an uncompressed audio recording so it doesn't use AAC or anything like that for its audio at least in XAVC mode or XAVCS mode. When it does that, and in conjunction with what can only be described as a very clean microphone input, you will get no advantage whatsoever to using something external like a zoom recorder if all you if all you need to do is record just the one microphone. Indeed, you can record two microphones with this camera, but you would have to externally balance them and level them before they go in. But like I say, the input to this camera is very, very good and also it records uncompressed audio as well. So if all you need to do is one or two microphones, go straight into the camera. You do not need to use an external recorder and then having to go through all like the, the messing around, resyncing in post and such. And also as well, as far as all the stuff was outside, you know, everything did have dead cats on. That definitely will impede the sound to a degree. You have to bear all that in mind as well. But they, that's really the only way you can use them type of microphones. Do you know what I mean? If you went out without dead cats or at least phone filters, you're not recording anything to be far too much distortion from the wind hitting the capsules and stuff so indoors or in different environments without dead cats there will be different tonal changes but we've done like for like out there because it was all done with dead cats or at least foam filters and yeah i think some of it was very impressive uh, bottom line you know i'm not going to tell you which was the best although i would have to say check out the the, the clippy em172 for a lavalier that's my only that's the only thing I'm going to kind of like, you know, force onto people as far as an opinion is concerned. But as for the rest of it, you know, you draw your own conclusions. There was not anything there that was terrible, you know. But the tonal changes are kind of like things where people, different people have got different opinions of stuff like that. So you work out for yourself and whatnot, whatever it is that you like. Anyways, yes, I've talked myself out um, and I've had a coffee just before, so I'm going to have to be careful. So yeah, you know, please leave, uh, you know, some comments and whatnot down below and all the rest of it. And uh, yes, I've been David Harry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.